Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is Sat Chat time. I hope you're having a great week. It's been a weird, uh, it's been a weird week. I've like, I, I'm just so ready for spring and I try to like manifest spring and we've had snowstorms like every other day for the past week and a half. So, uh, so apparently <laughs> my manifestations aren't working. Uh, how's your week? I hope you're doing well. Um, this is Sat Chat. This is not a tutorial. This, who knows? Who knows what we're going to talk about? I really don't know. I was just looking on my phone because often if I think of something interesting that I think, oh, this will be good to talk about on Sat Chat, I'll, I'll put it on my notes app. And I don't have anything on my notes app. I have like last week's Sat Chat notes. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have any that I didn't get to because I didn't have much to talk about last week either. So, um, so here we are. I don't know what I'm going to say, um, which actually isn't that different than usual. Um, so if you missed the videos on my channel this week, we did a big card making um, workshop where we did gel printing. So we talked about potentially doing that last week and it's there. It's done. It's up. You can check it out. Um, and uh, I have a blog post that goes with it. If you want to check out my blog post, my blog is, if you just search the Frugal Crafter, my blog would be like the first, uh, the first result. But I do have these photos of all the cards on my blog. So if you want to see a closer look at any of them, I feel like I've got like a hair in my eye or something. I'm seeing just like a little glitter, like, you know, just a little glimmer of, of shininess. I think it's like a strand of hair that's like in the ether. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's up. That was a lot of fun. Um, and, but you know, honestly, I have to say that I had the hardest time getting anything done this week. I was just so tired all week. Oh my word, just restless and preoccupied, but tired and just the snow was feeling so oppressive. And yesterday, um, I was walking the dog and it had snowed. It was, it snowed all day yesterday, but it had snowed the night before and it snowed enough that somebody had gone with their snowmobile over on the snowmobile trail. So I'm like, okay, I'll walk the dog in the woods. I wasn't going to because the day before the snow was like about six inches. There wasn't like an extra six inches of snow and it was just so exhausting walking through the woods with the dog. And I, when it's snowy out, I actually prefer to walk in the woods. So I, I honestly, I like walking in the woods anyway, over walking on the side of the road. It's just peaceful and I don't have to worry about cars or anything. Um, but especially because we don't have sidewalks in our town. So when there's a lot of snow, the snow eggs are like they're high and they're right up to the road. And like there's not room for two cars to really pass if there's somebody walking on the side of the road. So um, I would like kind of like to duck in on a snowmobile trail as soon as I can. Um, and if there's been a snowmobile on it recently, then it's great because it's kind of packed down. It's easy to walk on. But, um, uh, a couple days ago, it was just so the snow was so thick and it was just exhausting. Um, but I noticed that a snowmobile had gone through yesterday. I'm like, okay, we can go in the woods again and walk along and everything's fine. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, I hit the ground. Um, there was like an area where I, in the spring, there's like a stream that goes through the woods. So I can't walk on that area cause it's just too mar marshy. And apparently, cause it had been kind of warm. It's been weird cause it would, get, it would snow, we'd get like six inches of snow and then it would melt on the roads and on like walkways and stuff if you shoveled and then we get more snow. So I guess um, like the ground must have softened up and drained or something because like there was a skim of like snow, maybe ice and I went like right through it and I whacked my knee on the ice. Um, it, it was must have been must have like fallen through. It must have been about a foot between the top of the where the snowmobile like ice trail was, and then where the bottom of the stream was uh, in that particular area. Thank goodness I didn't drop the dog's leash because I would not have been in a fit state to chase her down throughout the woods. And it's kind of one of those times you know when you fall. I want to get to a certain age, and you fall, and you're like, oh, am I gonna get up from that? What is? Uh, am I hurt or am I just in shock? Um, it knocked the wind out of me. And I was like, oh, I'm in the middle of the woods <laughs> with a dog. <laughs> this is, this could go badly, but luckily I would just, just knock the wind out of me. I was fine. Um, I was limping a little bit and I was like, oh, I hope I make it home. All right. Cause like, you know, Jason's off to work. Uh, the kids are all off to school and stuff. So there's nobody, you know, uh, nobody near, well, actually I could have called the neighbor if I needed to, but anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, come, come into the woods, haul me out. <laughs> That's a lot to ask of a friend, um, but everything, everything was fine. Um, I, I'm like, I'm going to have to remember this tomorrow and cause I know I'm going to feel sore. I took some ibuprofen before bed and like, ironically, it's not my knee that is sore. It's, it's this, it's my opposite shoulder. It must've been, I must've caught myself like that. And, uh, and so yeah, my shoulder, I decided that I would manifest some summer vibes by wearing coral and, uh, and teal today and orange. And I'm just like, I need, I need some bright. 
I need some sunshine. I need to take the convertible for a spin. I was hoping that I would uh, get the convertible out this weekend, but I don't think it's going to happen. It's going to snow again tomorrow. Okay, so I'm filming this on Friday. Right now, gorgeous. It's sunny. The skies are just this clear, gorgeous, bright blue. Beautiful outside. The, the snow is just clinging to all the trees, so it's all like pretty, um, you know, and it's not too cold out. We walked the dog this morning. We saw a neighbor, and then we walked a, a little bit more with a neighbor, and it was just gorgeous outside. Um, but tomorrow we're getting another, I think, we're, I think we're only going to get about two to four inches up here in the Bangor area, but down near like Portland, they're getting like eight to 12 inches, unless like the storm shifts at all. So I'm like, yeah, there'll be no convertible ing for me this weekend. I was really hoping to <clears throat> take the convertible for a spin on Sunday because on Sunday I'm meeting up with some of my college friends. So we haven't seen each other for like 20 plus years. I am so excited to see them and I was really hoping that I could just like, you know, <clears throat> zip down in my convertible, but no, I think it's going to be a Jeep. It's going to be a Jeep weekend, but luckily it's not supposed to snow on Sunday, so the road should be nice and clear, so our our beautiful reunion won't be cancelled, I'm hoping. Um, so I've been looking forward to that since we planned it two weeks ago, um, so hopefully, hopefully nobody is sick and the weather stays, the weather is good at least for driving on Sunday, so we can all, we can all see each other again, because it's been, been way too long. Oh, so I'm not sure what else I'm going to work on today. I think when I'm done filming this, I might, um, I might work on the Tool Graveyard series that I've been talking about for like six months where like, what is this thing and why did I buy it? But because the idea, every time like I, I think about that, I'm like, oh, I should do this and I should do this and I should do that. And then it becomes this whole big ordeal that it's like, ah, oh, I don't know if I want to do all that stuff, but I think I do. And I think I have enough energy today. I've just, I, today I feel energetic and revived, maybe because of the sun. I don't know. That definitely seems to help. Um, but like all week, I've just been so tired. Uh, well, it was like Monday or Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Um, Jason and I had a meeting in town, but it was snowing, so uh, he didn't want me to drive the convertible out in the afternoon. So I'm like, well, I'll drive, take him to work, come back home, and then go back out again and pick him up from work and go to our meeting. And uh, the meeting got canceled after it already taken him in. So I was like, oh, I have to go back to town again. I have to cross the bridge again. I was so irritated. <laughs> and I was just really, really annoyed by that. I don't know. Uh, and it was snowing, and it was just. I was just, I was just, I was just not in a good, a good mood. And, uh, they're like falling asleep the other night, the other night. I'm like, okay, I'm my, this time of year is so drying. Um, cause you know, you've got the heat on inside and it's just, you know, plus winter is just not, it's not a humid time of year. It's just, you know, sort of rain, it snows, it's just everything's so dry. And my fingernails, um, have been so dry and I don't like to wear colored fingernail polish because I chip it and I can't keep it looking nice and I'm always getting like paint under my fingernails and um and everything so I'm like oh I'm gonna put a coat of clear polish on at bedtime so I don't have to sit around and wait for it to dry I'll just go to sleep and it will dry as I fall asleep I went to sleep I didn't even get the cap off the nail polish I crawled into bed I got the nail polish and I was asleep before I even took the cap off that's how tired I have been and like I can't keep my eyes open past like 9 30 it's been it's been wild, um, but at least I've been sleeping better this week than last week. Last week, remember, I kept waking up in the middle of the night, and then you guys were telling me you the same thing, so I don't know if it's seasonal or what, but everyone was telling me, yeah, I'm waking up, I'm like, being awake for like two hours in the middle of the night. It's no way to be. It's no way to be. Um, but anyway, that seems to have, uh, that seems to have subsided, so hopefully it's just like, uh, sun will come out, we'll all feel better, and uh, we won't be so sad <laughs> anymore in the deep, depths of winter. I'm telling you what, am I glad it's March. February, the longest month, the longest month of the year is over. That's why it's the shortest month, because we honestly, I don't think our mental capacity could handle February being longer than 28 days. It's just so bleak. It's so bleak. I, I hate this time of year. I really do. Um, I just, but you know, you've got to have the misery to appreciate the beautiful summers, right? That's what I say. That's what I say. <laughs> Let's keep saying. <laughs> Oh, I, I should definitely plan every year this time of year. I'm like, why didn't I book a vacation or something so we could go someplace warm? Um, and every year I say that and I forget. I forget because then it's like, oh, it's summertime. I am never going to feel cold and depressed again because it's summer. And then it's, you know, yeah. And then you're like in the middle of February and everything is sad <laughs> and the days are long. Uh, but yet not sunny. The days take so long, but they're so sunless and short. Um, hmm. I think that's done, the, the birch tree painting behind me. Um, it's still really shiny. It's the, it's still pretty wet actually. So that's been in here 
and I'm wondering if it, if the fumes from the oil paint might actually be making me tired because um, when it's cold in the winter, I, I heat my office because otherwise it's like about 50 degrees down here in the basement. And, um, and I'm not somebody that does well in the cold. I can't stay motivated in the cold. Um, I, I'm fine in, in hot weather for well, hot weather for Maine isn't hot weather like other places get. We get maybe 90s. Um, and some people are like, oh, I can, I love it when it's cold. I can't stand it when it's hot. You can always, you know, put on more layers if you're cold. It's like, you can put on more layers. It doesn't make you any warmer. You know, it's, I don't know. I can layer up and I'm not going to be warm enough a lot of times. But anyway, uh, so I had the door shut and I'm thinking that maybe the fumes from, from the, the supplies that I use might be also making me tired or making me feel kind of just unmotivated and blah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting that out of here so my room can be a little bit better ventilated. I have been opening it up at night and just letting um, letting the air circulate a bit through, but I also have 10 small oil paintings drying in the other side. I should probably just move everything out into the room of Horde to, uh, to finish drying. Um, but God, this is like the most boring, the most boring set chat ever. I do have a couple things that I'm going to be reviewing soon. I guess I could tell you what I'll be up to uh, working on reviews for. It'll be a while. Um, it takes me a while to get a review done, but I can show you what's in the works. I've got a few things. As you know, I've got the um, the Da Vinci paints here. This is um, this is the Denise's Earth Friendly colors. I don't have her opaque watercolor set, but this is the uh, this is her original set. I'll be doing an overall Da Vinci review because I've got my other Da Vinci paints that I've been using forever in here. So I've got those to review. I've got a set of Tri Art watercolors. Somebody was asking me about this swatch last week. These are Tri Art watercolors. They're a, um, and I was familiar with this brand only because when I used to teach at the um, at the senior center, Tri Art was a uh, company that sold to schools and uh, yeah, um, nonprofits, things like that. That like taught classes. It was kind of more of like um, uh more of like a school supplier. So I was familiar with the, with that name, but I I think I maybe used their acrylics or something. So um, I've got some watercolors here. They're a Canadian company, and I guess they're sold in art shops in Canada. And uh, one of my viewers sent me a, um, sent me a little palette full of colors that she had to try out. So I'll be working on a review for those. Thank you, Wendy. And then I've got a couple sets of soft pastels that I'll be reviewing. I'll just show you these really quickly. So Paul Rubens has a new set of 72 soft pastels and they have they have a set of 36 and a set of 40 I think it is and they are wonderful. They're just different um, different assortments. The the first set they came out with I think it's the 40 set had more portrait colors and then the second set they came out with was more like vibrant assorted colors. This set um, I have to compare them. I haven't compared the swatches or not. But this set seems to have a, it might even have both of them in there, I'm not sure. Um, let's see, if it was 40 plus 36, that would be 70, 76. I don't know, but there might have been some doubles, I'm not sure. So I get to compare the, the swatches or compare the, um, yeah, compare the colors and all the sets to see if these are just duplications of what's in the smaller sets or if these are different colors. Uh, so that will be part of the review. They, they come with a, a swatch chart now which is kind of handy. I don't know. I, I don't really feel like you need to swatch pastels because what you see is what you get. But um, sometimes you just want some, oops, sometimes you just want something to kind of get you going with a project. Um, and no, that's just your basic brochure. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have color information on it. And the print is way too small for me to read without my glasses. So, ah, uh, yeah. And then, oh, another set of soft pastels. Um, Artix has come out with some soft pastels. And I'm really ex uh, excited to try these because I haven't used, I've used their oil pastels, but I haven't used soft pastels from them. The Artix company, I think they're somehow um, related to Paul Rubens. At least in the United States, the company that, d d that distributes the Paul Rubens products also distributes the Artix products. So... Um, I don't know if the manufacturers are related or if it just happens to be they distribute both of those lines. I'm not sure, but this one actually has a little overlay with the colors. And then each of the colors has the number. Um, I'm just saying through all. Yeah, the number and the brand stamped into them. So that's something new. I, I haven't seen many companies do that. They're very soft. I just barely touched it and got some on my finger. Um, the, the only companies I know that do that would be like, um, Prismacolor used to do that for their new pastel pastels. 
um, but that's the only one I can think of that actually in, indents a num like the a color number. Um, ink Tense does that, but the, with their water soluble Ink Tense blocks. But other than that, I don't know of any others that do that. So it's kind of a, it's it's neat. I like to when I see like a product kind of going a little extra on something. I, I always think that's kind of neat. Um, and it kind of makes me think that well, if they're taking the time to do that, then they're probably not skimping out on other things. But you can never tell until you actually do the review. But that's all I have on my review shelf. I've been working on um, some freelance projects. So I've uh, I'm generally I'm a pretty in internally motivated person. So if I decide I want to do something, I don't have a problem like getting motivated and doing it. But this week, actually, I feel like all of February, I've had a really difficult time staying motivated. I've really had to push myself and make myself get stuff done because I'm just, I don't know, my energy levels have just been down. I haven't been feeling it. Um, so a couple interesting freelance things came across my desk and um, the one I'm definitely doing uh, actually two I'm definitely doing, but then there's some other ones I'm thinking, well, maybe I should. If I'm having a hard time getting motivated, maybe I need the external motivation. But then on the other hand, it's like, well, I stopped doing sponsor videos for a reason um, like two years ago because I was feeling so burnt out and I was just, I didn't even know what I liked anymore. And I was, I was kind of getting tired of having to use things that I didn't choose myself and um, having the obligation of um, having to do a video that somebody's paying for, you know, obviously if you're just doing something for fun, you're not, you're not as worried about how well it does versus if somebody's paying you for it. And also if somebody's paying you to do a video, they're going to be really, you know, they're, they're going to be picky. They're going to be, you know, telling you what to do. And I'm like, I don't really want to be told what to do. But then I was kind of panicking because, um, I can't even tell myself what to do. I'm just kind of being lazy and not liking it. You know, it's, it's one thing to rest and feel like, yeah, I've earned this rest. I deserve this rest. You know, I'm going to just chill out for a while, take a break. But when you feel like, uh, no, I need to get some stuff done. I don't feel good about this laziness, you know, uh, and I wasn't feeling good about it. I wasn't like enjoying slacking off and, you know, watching TV or something. I was really, um, I was really having a hard time with it, but yet not a hard enough time to get my button gear and do some stuff. So, um, so yeah, I've got a couple other, other, uh, I've got a couple sponsored videos I'm considering taking, but I'm not sure yet. I'm still kind of like, I'm still kind of on the fence, but, um, we'll see. We'll see if I can motivate myself and get my button to gear or if I need some external prodding to, uh, um, to help me live my best life or, um, at least, <laughs> at least make content on a regular basis for my YouTube channel. Uh, oh, speaking of TV and being lazy, um, do you remember the show Northern Exposure? I love that show. It was on when I was in high school and I haven't been able to find it streaming anywhere. And my husband actually found it on DVD at a local bookstore and he bought me a set and we watched the first couple episodes last night and it was as good as I remembered. It was so nice. Now I guess like, cause whatever the play, I know there were some like music issues with that show where the reason it's not in syndication anywhere is because they couldn't get the rights for all the music they used to either um, put it on a streaming service or have it, like um, on reruns on TV. So when they put, when a song comes, there's lots of music in that show. And I, so every time a song comes on, I'm thinking, oh, is that the original one? Or did they have to swap that out? So other than that being a little um, distracting, I, I think the music they picked is fine. I don't think I would have known if I hadn't known about that, um, that particular issue about the show. But, uh, but I'm enjoying it. It's a lot, it's a lot of fun. It's really cute. I think the thing I really like about that show is that it's a small community and, um, pretty much everyone's an adult in that. I don't think there's any little, if there are little kids running around, you don't hear from them. Um, but it's, there's like people of all ages, all getting along, all interacting. And I feel like that's something you don't see very often anymore. You don't see this intergenerational, um, like coexistence, you know, and I don't know. It's just such a cozy show. I just have such warm vibes about that show. And uh, so, yeah, I've got six seasons to watch. And, and then I looked up some, some several people. I posted a photo of the box set on Instagram. And uh, people were asking, oh, my gosh, where'd you find that? So I'm like, geez, I bet Amazon has that. And they do. I'll put a link down in the video description if you want to, if you want to check it out. Um, and the set of six seasons is not that expensive. So... Uh, if it's something that if you've miss, missed that show too and you want to check it out, it's um, it's uh, it's worth it. I think it's fun. It's a good show. It's it's pretty wholesome. I think, uh, 
but anyway, I'm enjoying it. It's kind of like a blast from the past. I guess I'm feeling kind of nostalgic. I think the whole thing, like going to see my college friends and uh, old TV shows, just making me feel a little, a little nostalgic. Um, I like nostalgia. I like nostalgia. I love to like see old photos, like when somebody shares a photo from like my childhood and say like a picture of my grandmother in her house or something like that. I love to look at the clutter that's around because you'll see things that just automatically hit you in the nostalgia. You know, it's like you'll see like an old um, peanut butter jar or a detergent box or something that is different than it is now. And there's just something so cool about seeing old snapshots with all that clutter in the background. And it's going to be weird though, because like in 50 years when people look at the photos that we took, we're so edited and so like cropped. We crop everything so perfectly. We wouldn't dream of sharing a photo with a mess in the background. Of course, you know, when you were, you know, back in the day, back in like the the 80s or whatever, taking snapshots, you're not thinking about like sharing this with the world. These are going to just photos you're going to stick in a box or an album or something. So who cares if there's like, you know, some weird clutter in the background or someone, you know, someone's making a weird face or, you know, you don't even think about it. You didn't even think about that back then. Our lives are just so curated now that it's, um, it's kind of too bad because you miss, you know, our future generations are going to miss out on all those, you know, those quirky little things, you know, from the background. Because how are we ever going to remember that? I was looking through some old photos because, um, uh, one of my friends is like, if you guys have photos from college, bring them. And I'm like, I don't think I have any photos from college, but I was going through my photo boxes anyway. And I was finding photos from my old apartment before Jason and I bought this house. And, um, cause we each had our own apartment before we bought this house. And I was, I used to think I was so chic <laughs> and my apartment was so classy. <laughs> Oh, it was not. It was so bad. I was complaining about the cord in my living room last week. Oh, the cords. The cords. I had surround sound in my living room in my apartment and there were cords everywhere. It was not great. My artwork... <laughs> It, yeah, I, I always kind of wonder, it's like, boy, I think I've peaked, you know, I don't think my work is, is that great uh, anymore. I think I'm just on a downhill traje trajectory. And then I was like looking at stuff that I had done. Um, and I thought it was so, <laughs> I thought it was so great. I thought I was so talented. And I'm like looking at this awful artwork hanging up on my walls in my apartment. And um, also there were so many packets of photos that were just like me trying to learn how to take slides because back in the day if you were going to try to get your work in a gallery you had to send slides of your artwork or if you were going to enter a competition you sent a slide so you'd have to get slide film for your 35 millimeter ca camera and you would load that in and you would have to take so many photos to hope you get one and then the slides would be put in these little the, the film itself would be developed and put in these these little slide mounts and then that's what you would send off and it was just, it was, I, there's so, there were so many bad photos. I have this, like, I had al albums of just, like, bad slides. And then um, I had pictures that I had taken of different artworks. I remember taking easels outside in the natural light, trying to get photo, not in, like, using a DSLR. And I was never really proficient with a camera, not a DSLR, an SLR. Oh, my word, because it was back in the day. Um... And like so many grainy photos, like the exposure was wrong, the aperture, and just everything was wrong. It was so wrong. I even took a class on like taking slide photography for your artwork. And I don't know, maybe those are just all the bad ones, but there were so many bad ones. I'm like, why am I keeping these old grainy pictures of terrible artworks? Uh, so I don't know why I didn't just start throwing things away when I was going through all those photos a couple weeks ago. I was probably like, no, this is probably like a week. Oh, no, it might have been about two weeks ago. So why didn't I just, while I was at it, go through and just throw away all those photos. They are of use to no one. Nobody's going to look through here and be like, oh, look, there's some crappy artwork my mother made. You know I mean? Uh, my crappy artwork, not my, my mother. I don't have any photos of my mother's artwork and it wouldn't be crappy even if I did. But um, when I'm talking about my own artwork, uh, it's like, but, and then it's like, I was like, well, I could do that because I was having this like, existential crisis week of I can't create anything because all my ideas are gone or bad. Um, it was a dark week, friends. Uh, so I'm like, I could just go through all those photos and I could throw away all those crappy bad ones. And then I, so I sat on the floor and I grabbed out the photo boxes and I'm just like, nah, I don't want to. It's too much work. <laughs> That's how little energy I had this week. I was just like, yeah, going through that box, sitting on the floor and going through a box of crappy old photos was too much work. Ugh, I hate it when I get that way. You know, just that whole like apathy. 
just this like just overwhelming feeling of gloom and apathy and gray gray it's like this this whole whole month of February is just was just gray I felt like you know and, and I hate that and hopefully I'm over the I'm over the hump and I can be colorful and bright and energized and inspired again because that's that's for the that's for the birds that is the pits and uh, if you are going through that right now I just want to let you know there's hope there's light at the end of the tunnel um <laughs> when the sun's out get outside bundle up and uh and go soak it in go soak it in um I've been taking vitamin D I, and I'm not sure, it, I, I can never remember to take vitamins. I don't have to take it, luckily, I don't have to take any pills for anything. So I don't like have a habit of um, of taking vitamins or anything. So um, Jason's like, well, I can just give you vitamins when I take mine and then you'll be all set. So uh, so it's usually after dinner, but it's usually more like eight or nine o'clock at night. He'll be like, do you take your vitamins? And of course, no, I didn't take my vitamins. And so he'll give me like vitamin D, B complex and calcium. And so, uh, so I take them and then I'm like, what if those vitamins are waking me up in the middle of the night? So I'm like, I should probably take them in the morning, but I can never remember to take them in the morning. And I don't like to take them on a completely empty stomach because they can upset my stomach. Although I don't know if any of those are stomach upsetting vitamins, but anyway, and then I watch this video and it says vitamins don't even actually do anything. So I don't even know what to think. I don't know what to believe. I don't know, but I guess anybody in like this far north of the equator should be taking vitamin D. So. I'm sure that's not a bad thing. And uh, especially since I wear sunscreen every day, I'm not getting any, especially in my, you know, when I just felt like this is the only part of my face that's exposed to the sun this time of year, because I've got a hat and I've got sunglasses and I've got a coat up to my ears because it's so cold. I'm definitely not getting any natural vitamin D, even if I was outside enough to, uh, to, you know, soak it in. So I guess, I don't know. See, I don't feel like I should tell you to take your vitamins because I don't even know if they work. You know, I, I'm not giving any health advice because it'll be a trigger warning or something. Somebody will say, you should warn people before you give them health advice. I'm like, I'm not giving you health advice. I'm not qualified. I uh, I did manage to fix my hair this week. I watched so many hair tutorials. And if you recall last week, I had orange ends and bright gold roots. Well, I, I, I fixed it, I think. And uh, I'm feeling much better about that situation anyway. And look, we're about out of time. Thank you so much for watching. I can't believe I talked for 28 minutes. Um, hope you're having a great weekend. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.